welcome to video three of three of estimates and mixed models. Kind of sort of, actually, we're moving on to model comparisons now, which um, if you paid attention two videos ago, I consider this a separate thing than estimates, but whatever. So yeah, today we're talking about uh, mixed models. It's gonna be fun. Now, remember, there are three ways we evaluate models. One is by visualizing the fit in the misfits. Two is by computing estimates, which is what we've talked about up until this point. And then three is by comparing models to other models. So there are two ways that we can compare models. One is visually using the compare.fits function in flexplot, or we could do that statistically using like the AIC, BIC, p-value, R squared, that sort of thing. And that all comes from the model.comparison function in flexplot. So let's look at some common model comparison questions you might wanna ask. You might ask yourself, hey, should I fix the slope or allow it to vary? And so in that case, you might have two models that look like this. Model one is lemur y tilde x plus x given id, data equals d. And then model two is y tilde x plus one. Or in other words, we are just estimating a random intercept, not a random slope as well. And then if we were to compare these two models, that would directly address whether we need the slopes to vary randomly or whether we can fix them. Another model comparison question you might ask is, should I include, should I include this variable as a predictor? So a model comparison might look like this. You got lemur y tilde x plus z plus, and then in the random effects, x given z compared to a model where you have y tilde x plus nothing or in other words there is no z so we want to know what is the inclusion of z above and beyond x in which case that is a model comparison question so how do i do it well it's actually in some ways you don't even need a video because it's exactly how you do it with a regular linear model but let's go ahead and step in r anyway all right i'm going to start by requiring flexplot and lme4 because we're going to use both those packages and then look at the math data set and it looks like we've got six columns, school, minority status, sex, socioeconomic status, math achievement, and then mean SES. That is the mean uh, socioeconomic status per cluster. Um, we're not going to use that. But instead, we're going to ask the following research question. Is there adverse impact? Or in other words, do minorities score lower than non-minorities once we control for socioeconomic status? So let's build the full model first. So this model includes both socioeconomic status and minority status. And then we're gonna go ahead and visualize that. I'm, gonna, I'm saying plot equals model because I don't care about the residuals at this point. And I'm saying that school is gonna be paneled. And if we were to do that, and then I'll go ahead and zoom in on the plot here. We get this lovely plot. Now yours might look a little bit different than mine because yours is gonna be sampling different clusters than mine. And that's totally cool. But we have, uh, what we're looking for here is we're just making sure that the gray lines, thin gray lines basically seem to pass through the data. And for the most part, they do. Now, sometimes actually go, go ahead and do another one just so you can see a situation where something wonky happens. I'll be back until I find one. All right, so this one kind of shows it. So this middle plot right here, um, your intuition might say that the line should be a little bit higher because that's where the data are a little more dense, but it's biased a little bit toward the fixed effects. We would expect that because remember, that's what mixed models do is they basically fit individual regression lines, but they're biased more towards the fixed effect. But for the most part, it looks like the gray lines are passing through the data. So yay. Now let's go ahead and look at all the slopes together. So in the previous plot, we're looking at the degree to which the cluster level regression lines fit through the cluster level data. But now we want to know whether our choice in modeling socioeconomic status as a random effect was a good one. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot all the schools, not all the schools, we're going to plot 100 schools together at once as separate lines, colors, and symbols so that we could see how parallel they are. And as I'm looking at this, um, there's so much confetti, it's confetti confetti it's hard to tell so i don't know if you knew you could do this but if i go alpha equals 0.2 and then ran that little bit it would reduce the transparency of the dot actually i'm going to go 0.03 i guess okay so now that makes the those lines a lot more apparent so we do see some deviations in the slopes but for the most part they're pretty parallel and generally, if we can go with a fixed effect rather than a random effect, we want to do that. It's just a simpler model. 
Um, so at this point, I'm gonna do an unplanned model comparison. Originally, I wanted to ask about minorities versus non-minorities, but at this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and fit a reduced model where we fix the slope. So SES used to be a random effect. Now we're saying no more random effect. Let's just do a fixed effect. And if I do that, and then do compare.fits, what's gonna happen? Something funky is gonna happen. Notice that the red and the blue line overlap basically perfectly. Why is that? Well, the reason why that is, is because whether you allow socioeconomic status to randomly vary or not, the fixed effects are gonna be the same. And these plots are showing the fixed effects. And so, of course, they're not gonna vary. So, in other words, I'm just showing you this to show you that uh, visualize or compare.fits will not help you when you're doing that kind of model comparison where you're just looking at fixed versus random effects. Instead, what we want to do is a model.comparison. Let me scroll up so my head's not in the way. There we go, that's better. All right, if we do that um, and compare the full versus reduced model, AIC is favoring the full model, BIC is favoring the full model, Bayes factor, oh, sorry. AIC is favoring the full model, the BIC is favoring the reduced model, Base factor is favoring the reduced model. P-value is favoring the full model, but barely. All right, so it's a little ambiguous. Um, you could go with either, um, and there's no clear cut, um, you should do this versus that. Just looks like the AIC and the P-value agree that we should take the full model, whereas the BIC and the base factor say we should go with the reduced model. Um, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to say that we are going with the simpler model. And what's funny is that in my notes to myself, I say definitely do the reduced model. Um, why did I say that? I was probably looking at the base factor alone <laughs> and not the other one. So I made a mistake. I was looking at these things. I was looking at the ba base factor outside of the context. Um, so I'm gonna change that to maybe do the full model question mark because it's ambiguous at this point. But just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna say new full is equal to the reduced. So in other words, I'm going with the fixed effect model. Now I can actually test my hypothesis whether we need minority status. And so I'm gonna say SES uh, plus nothing, so no minority anymore, and then one. And I'm comparing that to the model, uh, to that model right there. So the only difference between the two is minority status. And if I fit that one and then visually compare the two, this one is actually gonna be helpful. And so to do that, I'm going to use compare.fits, math achievement, tilde minority, plus school. So that's controlling the visuals. Data equals math. New full, new reduce. So next you list the different models that you have. And then I'm going to say clusters equal five. Uh, that's kind of weird because earlier we said sample equals 100. Now we're saying clusters equals five. What is wrong with that developer of Flexplot? Me. Uh, why would I use different argument names? I don't remember why I use different argument names, but it doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, what a moron. So anyway, for some reason, compare.fits, you have to use the word cluster and visualize, you have to use the word sample. Maybe I'll fix that someday. Anyway, and so on the x-axis, we've got minority status. On the y-axis, we've got math achievement. And then in panels, we have different schools. And what am I looking for here? I'm just seeing how different the two fits are. So these are the, the blue lines are the fit, fixed effects for the full model. The red lines are the fixed effects for the reduced model. And they are generating pretty different predictions. So it looks like there's a minority effect, but let's go ahead and run some numbers. So we do new full and new reduced. So AIC is favoring the full model. BIC is favoring the full model. Bayes factor overwhelmingly favoring the full model, p-value overwhelmingly favoring the full model, and then we also have r-square changes, so, which is kind of nice about the compare.fits is it tells you how much variance is explained by that new thing. So when we add minority, we explain about 2% of the residuals and about 17% of the intercept variance, so that's pretty cool. And let's go ahead and visualize the full model now just to see what it looks like, and that's what we get. So actually, I'm gonna do another one, because uh, this school 4410, it looks like it's an all, uh, there are no, mi there's only one minority. <laughs> so let's get some diversity in there, just so we can see the data, just so we can see the model a little bit better. Again, another one. 
Y'all need some DEI initiatives. You're screwing up my data. There we go. So now we have a fit for each of the regression lines. Um, and so we see on average, there's a difference of, actually we could look that up. On average, there is a difference between minorities of 2.938. So it looks like there is adverse impact going on. Um, the minorities are scoring lower on the math achievement scores than uh, non-minorities. And yeah, that's what the visual looks like. Of course, there's a socioeconomic status effect. Um, but yeah, that's looking good. And just for the sake of completeness, oops, oops, my head was in the way. That's what I was doing to get the estimates. So just estimates new underscore full. And just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to go ahead and visualize it again. But this time I'm going to say plot equals all I think it is. And then this will show me both the residuals and the fitted data. And if we do that, uh, our histogram of the residuals looks pretty symmetric. A little bit of negative skewness, but nothing that I'd worry about. Residual dependence plot, though the raw data look a little weird, which kind of happens when you have um, a scale that can only go up to 25 and only down to zero. Um, you often get something that looks kind of like banding like that, and that's totally normal. But if you look at the lowest line in the middle, there's a little bump there, but for the most part, nothing to worry about. And SL plot, again, looks like we've met the assumptions of the model. So yeah, we're in good shape. So yeah, hopefully you found that helpful. Remember, if you want more guidance and more step-by-step -step instruction, please visit simplistics.net, where you can do a self-guided course with discussion boards and quizzes and exams, and you can interact with me through the discussion board and interact with fellow classmates and that sort of thing, or you can take a live class from me. Yeah, that's all I got. Um... And before I go, let me go ahead and review the learning objectives for model comparisons. First, the two ways we do model comparisons. One is we do it with visuals using compare.fits, and the other is with numbers, which we use the compare model.comparison function. And then basically how to perform model comparisons in R, which I just showed you. So yeah, those are uh, pretty lame learning objectives. There's only two of them. Hopefully you got it. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.